everyone and thanks so much for stopping by the farmhouse. So glad to have you along. Today I'm going to be making and preserving applesauce. We have been so busy with all of the farm chores around here that we decided we needed to take a day off. You know what they say, I'll work and no play, right? So we went and had some fall fun. We went on some corn mazes and we definitely got lost. We took a nice drive. We went to an old fashioned cider mill. We had cider and donuts and we picked some amazing delicious apples. And now I wanna make applesauce and I wanna can it so I can have it all season long. So a little education about applesauce and picking apples. Apple season can start early in September and go all the way through the end of October and into November. During that season, different types of apples ripen at different times. And you have sweet apples and tart apples. They vary on the scale of taste. They also vary in texture. You have crunchy apples and then you have soft apples. And so you need to be educated on your apples what their names are, what time they ripen, what their texture and their taste is, so you know what to use it for. For instance, Red Delicious apples are very sweet, but they're also very soft, and they don't really make a good applesauce or a good pie because they get very mushy when you cook them. But you can use any kind of apple you want. Here are the three varieties that we chose. First, I chose this Honey Crisp apple. It is a favorite of many um, because it is sweet and yet it is crunchy. Now, I don't use sugar in my applesauce, so I want that sweetness, but I also want that texture that's gonna hold up to the cooking process. The second apple we chose was this Blondie. Now, our local orchard had these a couple weeks ago. We went and picked some up and we were surprised by how sweet they were. So I knew I really wanted them in this year's sauce. So I got those and then we also picked some gala apples. So these are super popular too for snacking. They're very sweet and they have a little bit of a crunch to them. So these are the three varieties that I chose. Now you can choose any variety you want. You can go with just one variety or you could choose several. You could add some tart in there. If you're going to be adding sugar, you want to balance out the sweetness and the tartness. You can do that. Um, there are lots of recipes, but my recipe does not use sugar and it makes a great sauce. Now my sauce also is what I call rustic. It's chunky. I really like it chunky. I don't like it parade completely. You can parade yours completely if you want to, but with all that being said, let's get into the process and I'll show you how we make our delicious applesauce. The first step in the process, guys, is to go ahead and wash your apples very good. We don't have an organic orchard here, so I just want to make sure that I get all the pesticides, the dust, and the dirt. We want to start with good, clean fruit. And so I'm going to set them aside to dry, and now I'm going to start the peeling process. I'm just using a standard vegetable peeler. No, I don't remember where I did get this one from, but it works really well. It makes the process really quick, and I really like it. You're just going to peel away and then it's the time to start the coring process. You can peel a few at a time or do them individually. Uh, to remove the seeds, I'm just using this melon baller. It is a trick I learned from Ina Garden. It does a great job of getting down and under and getting the seeds out. Now the chickens are going to get all these peels and it's going to be a great treat for them. But apple seeds are toxic to chickens and they can't have them. Now I'm sure one or two wouldn't hurt them. But I'm not taking any chances, so I'm placing them in a separate bowl and they will go into the compost pile. Now, how big you chop your apples depends on, it's going to depend on how long they cook. So I'm chopping mine small. Now, it's great to have a bowl of water with some lemon in it. I'm using a tablespoon in a large bowl. Uh, this is going to help keep your apples from browning and keep them fresh while you peel them because it takes a few minutes and you don't want your apples turning brown. Now I'm adding a lot of cinnamon and mine will be brown, but if you are not doing that, you want your applesauce nice and fresh looking, you want to add the lemon to the water. And just continue to peel and it is okay if you do not get every little tiny piece of peel off the apple. That will all cook down and go away so you won't even know it. 
Next, I'm going to drain the apples. I don't want that much water in them because I cook mine differently. That is the beauty of this recipe. I am using the crock pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my apples in there. Now I did add about a half a cup of water to this. The crock pot's pretty full. And I'm adding two half table teaspoons of cinnamon. So it's going to be about one teaspoon of cinnamon total for this mini apples. And I'm just going to give it a quick stir and make sure I am evenly distributing all the cinnamon and so all the apples can get cinnamon on them. Now it's been about an hour and you can see that the apples are getting softer and fluffier and they're starting to cook down. Now I did add some more apples to this. That's why it looks like there's more there is. Um, now it has been about five and a half hours and you can see just how far it cooked down and that is what's great about this recipe you could just throw it in the crock pot and let it go now i did check this about once an hour and um, now is when you get to decide how you like your texture i like mine chunky you can certainly use a blender but if you do uh please use glass and please let this cool in between batches i'm just going to use potato masher you could totally use an immersion blender also now I have this hot water. I'm sterilizing my jars and keeping them hot because you can see the applesauce is hot. And when we transfer it into the jars, we don't want the jars to be too cool and crack. Now this really old beat up canner is a uh, bit in my family forever and I've used it ever since I was young. So I just really like using it. It's just kind of nostalgic. Once this water boils, I will be putting my jars in there. And so since we have a minute, for those of you who are canners, you know what these tools are. But for those of you who do not, I just want to take a moment to show you. This little tool is a jar gripper. It allows you to place the jar in and take it out of the boiling water without burning yourself. And uh, it is a great tool to have. Next, I'm going to use this funnel. This funnel is made especially for mason jar so the small mouth and you can use it with the wide mouth as well if you had to spoon everything in using a small spoon it would take forever so this is really handy and it makes the job go so much quicker now i have this little wand and it has a magnet on the end of it and what we use this for is we soak our lids in hot water and they help soften the seal so you get a better seal on your jar this little wand allows you to grab it out of the hot water and place it on the jar easy peasy without burning yourself i now have one more wand to show you this one goes in once your product is inside the jar you want to take this and go along the jar and press in against your product just a little bit to help release any air bubbles you don't want air in the jar it will affect your food and it will affect how long the jar stays fresh. I also have this parchment paper because as you will see it gets pretty messy. Now I am filling the jars and I'm going to leave just a little head space at the top so that there's plenty of room in there and uh, as you can see it goes really nice and quick with that funnel. I'm going to wipe the jar and I'm going to go ahead and release all the air bubbles and then I'm going to wipe the jar one more time just to make sure there's absolutely nothing on the rim to come between the seal and the jar so we get a great seal. Last, we add the ring on here and then it's ready to go into the canner. I will gently place this rack right down in there and it will go into the water. The jars will be immersed and they will process, uh, after I put the lid on, they will process for about 20 minutes and we'll come back. Here we are 20 minutes later the jars have processed for their 20 minutes. Now I'm using two jar grippers and I am very carefully and gently lifting those jars out by the rack. I'm taking the rack out and resting it on the edge of the boiling pan so I can easily assess the jars and uh, get them out of there without burning myself. And I ended up with three pints of applesauce and it's just such a rewarding feeling when you're taking them out of the canner and they look so good and all that hard work is paying off because now you have some delicious food that's going to keep for a while. Here they are on the counter. I am anxiously awaiting to hear the pop from each lid to be sure they secured 
and now the mm. taste. Guys, this is so delicious. It tastes like cheat day and it's apple pie, but it's just apples and cinnamon here in my very own kitchen. I really love canning, preserving, and putting things away, and I hope this inspired you to make your own applesauce. Please let me know if you make this recipe. Comment down below how it turned out for you. Until next time, guys, be blessed, be safe. I'll see you soon.